The program you are about to see is called the Anishinaabe View, in their own words. This is a series of shows produced by the Algoma District School Board for a website being developed called Voices from the Gathering Place. This is about the earliest history of Sault Ste. Marie between 1622 and 1870. What we discovered in developing this website was that while the significant events in this period all included First Nations and Métis people from the area, and while their stories were being represented, their voice was not. And it was important to include their voice and their stories. And even more remarkable and interesting was that the stories from the oral tradition were often ones that were not in the written record. And so we're so happy to present this series of shows filmed at Eastview Public School with Anishinaabe uh, students from grades four to eight with elders, chiefs, and knowledge keepers and hearing the Anishinaabe view in their own words. Ani, bonjour. Uh, my name is uh, Peter Migons. Migons means fetter. I'm a grandfather. And you probably got a lot of grandfathers and grandmothers. So you know, you know who I am. And I love talking to kids. I, I really do. I, uh, I, I find it very serious when I talk to. I have to uh, give honest answers to any of, any of those kind of questions you've got to ask me. You don't even have to go by those what you got in your hand too. You can, you can ask me something that you really uh, was wondering about, were wondering about. You can ask me that. You don't have to actually go by those, uh, because uh, that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. And I, I'm so glad to, to be here, because I, I want to show you what I do, the art I do, and uh, the language I speak. And I told you there, I was just kidding around when I said that those questions you got in your hand, you got to ask me in Ojibwe. You probably wouldn't be able to, but uh, but you can ask me, any one of you know how to talk Ojibwe? Does any one of you know fluent Ojibwe? Do you know anybody that talks Ojibwe? Yeah? Do they fluently, uh, without reading? Yeah? Yeah, that's what, uh, I have a hard time in Sault Ste. Marie to meet such a person that talks uh, I know I'm, I'm from Manitoulin Island, and when I talk to the people around here, the, the native people in this area, they have a slang, eh? You know what a slang is? They have a different way of saying, they have a different way of saying uh, some words in Ojibwe. And so, some of them, they talk to me like they're reading the, the, the language, and I don't, I don't go for those pronunciations too much. I have a hard time with them. But if somebody talks to me in Ojibwe, the, my own language, I can answer them. Like we got a lot of these things here, just as much as, oh yeah, this thing you gave me. To, who's the guy that gave me the tobacco? Yeah. You gave me this tobacco. It's very important. When you give tobacco to somebody to do something for you or come out of their way to, uh, to, that you want to ask them questions. You give them tobacco like this, you, you approach an elder. And that way he knows it's important when you give him tobacco. It's, it's important for him. He's got he's to gotta answer you as best as he can. That's what tobacco is uh, for. And before we go any farther, I want to teach us uh, when we're doing it, doing this circle. Sometimes we do these circles like this. Eh? We don't want them that close in. 
when we're tonight today is good today is the way today is okay but uh, whenever you do circles as you get older and you go into the circles and you go and somebody says let's go and make a circle here well you'll say okay let's make a circle but we got to have the eastern doorway open you tell them eastern doorway is that way eh? southern doorway is over there you got to leave it open so you if somebody's sitting there you'd say well we'll have to take your chair out and so you can move either to one side or the other and same as the southern doorway and then you make a western doorway here all the time you do that as you're as you're I, what i'm teaching is right now is for the rest of your lives it's not just for something to remember today it's to remember as you become older like me, I'm 77 years old. And uh, I'll be 78 in uh, September. So what I've learned, I've learned like the same age as what you guys were. That's when I started learning. So always remember that. Whenever you guys sit in a circle or even, uh, even elders, or I mean even, even adults, you can teach them. Some adults don't know either. Just because they're adults doesn't mean they know everything. So you t teach them when they ever make a circle like this. Say, well, we got to have a southern door. We got to have eastern door. We got to have a western door. We have a north, northern doorway. Have those little openings. Like even when you sit around in a circle, take one chair out, and one chair out there, and one chair there. That's just, I'll probably ask you, I've talked to, Young people like you for I don't know how how many years ago, maybe about 20 or 30 years ago, I went to schools. Now some old men come up to me, 30, 40 year old people, young women and men that are in their 40s. I remember you, Peter, you came and talked at our school a long time ago, they say. So it is important. So you will probably meet me. Uh, maybe maybe ten ten years from now or five years from now, and you'll be you'll be a young men, young woman, and you'll remember. So that's why it says there in the front door there. It says, "Listen to your elders." That's why it says that. Listen to your elders, and that doesn't mean just to listen to, li to your elders. Learn from what they say. Learn from what they say. Remember what they say. And then you'll be able to say, I remember one old elder, elder telling me that. You'll be able to say that as you get older because you'll be carrying that knowledge for your, for your own self. So whatever we learn here today, before I got this tobacco, before I came here today, I said to my higher power, my, my own higher power, I said, not a motion. New, new gig to do not. We know Jake. New, new, new. None of you don't know that. I said, I'm going to go and speak over there to young people. Please help me. I said. I prayed. So don't ever be scared, or don't ever be shy to pray whenever you, you, come up against something that you have to do. Ask uh, the pro. Uh, the power of your understanding, your God of your understanding, not my God, but your own. Ask him and say, not emotion, help me. And this is what will happen. And everything will come. Your answers will come and everything like that. So much for the teachings. Now I guess we'll have to go on questions. Eh? Starting with this young guy here. How did you learn the Anishinaabe stories? Oh, that goes back to uh, my dad. I, I told Peter about that. I said, a long time ago, there was an old man used to visit my dad, and he had white hair like this. And they called him Wopskindip. Wopskindip means uh, whitehead. And they, they talked. I, they sent me up. They sent me to bed because those old men were going to start talking. And so they started talking and uh, I was chased up to bed. So I went upstairs, but I could still hear them downstairs. 
And they told all kinds of stories, all kinds uh, stories that they heard. And we're going back, I'm 77. And I, that was probably 60 years ago. And they were talking about 60 years before that. So we were talking about 120 years ago. 120 years ago. In, in this instant we're talking. What I'm telling you as kids right now, it's probably 150 years ago. So that's how I learned how to, about stories. Okay. How long does an idea take to get from your mind onto a can? A canvas? Pardon? I can't hear you. How long does an idea take to get from your mind onto a canvas? On my canvas? Oh, I was just telling Peter about that again. Uh, see this, this here? This here, uh, I do these first. I background a lot first, and uh, it's a lot of work to background because it just doesn't come to you. Uh, you fool around with all kinds of colors and you arrive at that background. There's nothing there. Then you look at that background and then you start, then you start give, getting your uh, idea what to put on there. That's how I started anyway. That's, some other artists, I, I can't speak for other artists. You know, the, which, if you ever want to do art, you do it whatever you, the way you feel like it. So don't, I can only, if I was to teach you art, I can only tell you how to mix colors, how to respect your, your uh, brushes, respect your canvases and things like that. But I wouldn't be able to tell you. But that's how I started with the backgrounds and then I put whatever I put in there. Thank you. Max? Ani Bojou, Kaya Nadishnikaz. Some of your art sells for thousands of dollars. How do you put a price on your work? <laughs> <laughs> I wish <laughs> I wish that was the case though. I, I have a lot of people, about 40 years ago, I had a person uh, taking care of my art in Niagara on the lake. And I learned a lot from her because I was just, I was just coming into art at that time. And this was in the days of, uh, well, 40 years ago. I was sort of young. And uh, she, she put the prices on, on my stuff. I didn't. So it's, that one there, those kind there would be maybe three or four hundred dollars, and these ones there would be around two hundred dollars each. And in those days, they would they would probably be at that time half of that. That's about forty years ago. But now it's probably a little different. So you have to go by the the times. Were there any artists who inspired you in your painting style? I, I think I think so. Most of my uh, family paints Carl Beam. If he's ever intre interested in the art, you'll know that Carl Beam is, is he's gone now, but uh, he painted a lot. And John LaFord and a lot of the other old artists that are gone, or Norval Moore. So you learn from these people how to what their thoughts are. I have met Norvell years ago before he left and uh, we talked a lot about art. And that's, art is, uh, well art is like talking to everybody. Uh, art is like, an artist talking to another artist is, you can talk all night because it's an ongoing thing. Same as the paintings, you can always go on and on. There's no mistakes. There's no mistakes in the art. If you start art there on those things, you can keep going and keep going, keep going. My wife is the one that tells me to stop. Don't put any more stuff on there, she says. You know, because I can keep going, I can keep going, I can keep going. These things I can move. But this Mishmashu there, the bear, there, these guys there, I can just load that up. So it's, it's mind boggling, really. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, next. I hope I'm giving you the, the right answers because uh, I, I come here with the idea that maybe I might inspire just maybe one of you to start painting, one of you. I don't want all of you to start painting, 
but maybe one of you is, uh, will come to me someday, maybe five or 10, 20 years from now and say, I, I'm a painter now. You know? I started one girl here in the Sioux. She's doing real good art now. So we, with Solomon, I don't know if you guys ever heard, hear of her, but I, I, I was the one that she bothered. She, one time she approached me and said, uh, I want to buy. I want to buy a painting off you, uh, a present from my, uh, for my husband. He, she said. So I went in the back. I got lots of canvases at home. I went and got her a little canvas. I made. I got a lot of half finished, uh, half tubes of colors. Eh? So I went and got a couple of them maybe, and so I said, "You, you, make a picture for yourself, for your husband." And that's how she started. But the thing is, when you start something, you keep it up, because she did. She used to phone me pretty near three or four times in the evening and sometimes in the morning and wake me up. And uh, she said, how do you do this? How do you do that? How do you do that? But I knew she was serious. She was serious into the art. And that's the way any one of you wanted to do the art too. If you're serious for something, you'll go after it. You, you just won't, won't do it. And anybody can paint, let me tell you that. Anybody, any one of you can paint. It all depends is how bad do you want to paint? How bad do you want these colors? If you like that kind of art, if you like that kind of art, and same as the other kind of art, there's all kinds of different art. But if you like to do it, you can. The thing is, you have to, you have to keep it up. That's, what I, that's why I'm here today. I'm not here today to waste your time or my time. I'm here so you guys can say, seriously, I'd like to do that myself. And there's no, no such thing as saying, oh, I can't do that. He's, got, he's special. He's got the gift to do that. Don't, don't ever use that on it, on to stay away from art. He's got the gift, I don't have the gift. Don't ever say that to yourself. Say, I can do that, it's up to me. I, I will do it. And I'll ask questions, how do you do this? How do you get lighter green? How do you get darker blues? Things like that. How do you mix this? How do you mix that? And you'll ask, and you'll ask, and you'll ask. Somebody that'll tell you. <laughs> Let's, uh, Get another question there. <laughs> we like your art. Can you tell us about the painting called the Blackie? Oh, this guy here. Yeah, that's uh, it's just a teacher, ain't eh? like these teachers just got here. And these here, these here animals, they they like to learn. They like to listen. I I, I babysat a dog over the weekend, eh? Uh, and uh, I took him outside. And I had to tell him this, go and pee. And away he went, eh? And he knew what he had to do, and, and uh, he's standing, standing around there in the yard, and I said, okay, come in the house now. He came right in. See, so animals are pretty smart, too. They'll listen if uh, they're taught. Like, this guy is teaching. He teaches everybody. He teaches the birds. He teaches the fish, everything. The fish are important, too, because they come up like the smells came and fed me this a uh, couple of days ago. They came up river. Somebody went and scooped them up, brought them up to my house, and I cooked them. So they they do that in the spring. Eh? They come to feed you the smells and the uh, suckers too. They they come in uh, in the spring also. So you can catch them. Everything is there's a story in everything. The next one, please. Oh, that's the one I already did talk about him. Old Wolfskin, the whitehead. The guy that, uh, because he had a white hair like this, that's why they call that, in, in, in Ojibwe, they call that Wolfskin. It's like a head. But uh, that's, they actually mean white haired. Why did your father not let you stay and hear the stories that 
he and the white head shared with each other? Well, they were adults, see? And sometimes there are stories, I guess, some of us kids, some of us children, when I was young like this, that we, didn't have, we, couldn't, we couldn't listen to, eh? So they told us. That. By that time, probably those kind of stories came later when they knew we were all asleep upstairs, but not right away, because they talk, old men talk, old ladies talk, you know. You know that yourself, your grandmother, <laughs> your grandfather, they all talk. You know? and if they see other old men, they start talking. Just catch a hold of them sometimes, you know, watch them. Ask them, you say, Grandpa, what the hell were you talking about, you know? When you tell a tr traditional story in English, is anything lost? Uh, what's the last part? Um, when you tell a tradition, tr tradi <laughs> <laughs> tr traditional story in English, is anything lost? I still can't hear the last part. <laughs> when you tell it in English, is anything lost? Oh yeah, that's what I was just saying. Like I was trying to explain to you, Whitehead. Whitehead is Wopskindip. You're saying Wopskindip. It's like have somebody a Whitehead. But the taken for idea is he's white haired. Eh? So a lot of times you can't, I can't tell a joke in Ojibwe that I heard in English. I can't tell it because it doesn't sound funny. Sometimes I tell another native guy uh, uh, a joke uh, in uh, in Ojibwe, and they'll laugh like hell because they know what I'm saying. Eh? But if I translate that, you know, it, it doesn't sound right. It doesn't, there's no, uh, the laugh is not there. Thank you. Uh, could you tell us about what your mother said when you asked her why she had a pail that was smoking? That's a long story, my boy. You're going to be here all afternoon. <laughs> See, uh, a long time ago, a long time ago, we, we, we weren't allowed to do this, what these guys are doing. See, we, I could light a smudge here today and pass it around you guys, and there's nothing the school could say to me. Maybe they say, put it away, Peter, but I wouldn't probably listen to them. <laughs> and you'd probably uh, do your uh, thing here with the purify yourself. Eh? Well, in, in days of old, a long time ago, we couldn't do that on our reserves. On our reserves. Or we were ruled by uh, other people that uh, said that shouldn't be done. So when my mother took that pail and had it full of sweet grass and sage and, uh, and uh, cedar and she walked around the house with it, the smoke just coming right out. I said to her, I said, Mom, what are you doing? She says, she says, well, I'm just trying to get the mosquitoes away. But what she was actually doing was purifying the house, purifying our building, so, the, so we could be safe there. Like uh, you kids, if we use children, you're young people, we, if somebody is in charge of you, in charge of you, they got to do their utmost to keep you safe. Same as my parents was the same way. We, they were in charge of us. So the, my mother, she didn't only believe in herself, she believed in somebody higher than her. So she prayed to that God of her understanding. And so she, uh, she used that smudge to purify the house, to keep it safe. That's what it was all about. Thank you. Do you have any spiritual connection to your art? Spiritual connections? Oh, I wish you could tell me in, in Ojibwe. Spiritual connections to my art. 
There was a, a priest uh, just uh, a couple of months ago asked me, he says, there's a river here. They call St. Mary's. Peter, I want you to draw me St. Mary, he says, by the river. Because I want to use it in my church, he says. And I've been toiling, toiling, trying to figure out that idea for the past two or three months. The, that spiritual connection about this river here and about the virgin or whatever. Because this is St. Marie. And I don't know. But as far as every one of these paintings that you see here, every one of them, before I start, I always ask the creator, help me. Because I, I don't want to draw junk. I don't want to, I don't want to waste my time. So ask me, please help me put on, but help my hands with this canvas or this paint. This is what I say. That, that's the truth too. I'm not going to lie to you it's because I'm an old man. I'm a grandfather. I wouldn't want, I got a granddaughter here someplace, way over there. I would never lie to her. So that's how yous are important to me too, as we're sitting here. So I, can, I hope to give you a good answer. That's all. Next one. Why is it important for young people to learn the Anishinaabe language? Uh, a long time ago, uh, people didn't really realize how important language was because uh, there was people talking French there and somebody would come along, why don't you speak your own language? Why don't you talk English, they'd say. And these people were, they were talking their own language, the French language. The natives were talking their own language. But there, there was people that wanted only one language, which is not right, which is not right. You can think that, all right. You know, you can think there should be one language there shouldn't be French, there shouldn't be Ojibwe or things like that. But that, as you get older, you'll realize that. I'd like to talk my own language. If you're part Indian or part this and part that, you'll learn to look for your own language and say, yeah, I'd like to know what, how to talk my language. It's important, it is important to talk your language. You know, one of my uh, ideas probably wouldn't go along with your ideas, but it's, it's a, to keep an open mind and say, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't mind talking my own language if I knew how. It is important, it's, it's who you are. I'm Ojibwe, so I talk Ojibwe. I'm from the Three Fires, and, but it's still, I'm Ojibwe. Thank you. Uh, why do you include the water links in some of your art? Oh, that's a story. The water links is a story of uh, uh, what, it, what, it, what if it is belief or something. I don't know what it is, but it's a story sometimes. Uh, what uh, what people uh, when they see Lake Superior, Lake Superior has its own uh, its own, and that's probably the, the Mishmashu is probably the Lake Superior. So that. That's why it's important. We we had we got it around here someplace. Somebody took a picture of it. Peter will show you later what it looks like. Some of them, somebody took a picture of it. But it's uh, 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 whether it's made up it doesn't really matter. If it's true, it, again, it doesn't really matter. It's it's a story. It's a story of me That's what happened at one time or other. That's why. Yeah. Okay. Did someone teach you how to paint? Yeah. No, no. I, yeah, I, I bothered people about mixing stuff and how to. There was a, there was a friend of ours, Cecil Young Fox was his name. And he, he came up to uh, John LaFord one time. And he had, uh, he had paint as thick as this on his paintings, like that. Paint, you know, paint, uh, acrylic paint. It was that thick, and he was he was using great big lumps of it there. And John Laforte asked, John Laforte told him, he said, "Do you 
you're using too much paint because only one bottle of paint like that to, to just to do this part. That's but he was he was mixing his paint, not not thinning it out. Eh? So he had a great big blobs of paint, <laughs> and we all laughed at that. We didn't make fun of him because he didn't know what he was doing. He thought that was the way to paint, and he had he's gone now. But he had if you just ever look up Cecil Young Fox. You'll find out that one of the ladies here in the city was lucky enough to get one of those paintings that had great big thick, thick paints like that. Thick, thick paints about this thick. You see, and uh, that thing must be worth a lot of money today because, because he didn't know how to mix paint when he started. Thank you. Well, so. Uh, which stories do you remember best? Best? Best. Back. Which stories do you remember best? Best. Best or back? Best. Best. Best, so? I don't know, recent, I guess. <laughs> I'm, uh, I don't really remember. Uh, there is some stories that are uh, funny. You know, there's some stories that are funny, but I... I can't remember anything best. <laughs> I, I don't even know. Can you tell us the legend of the water links? The legend? <clears throat> uh, again, I, we're going to be here a long time. What time you got? It's 3 o'clock now. Yeah, the links. They call it links. Uh, some, some people, we call it Mishmashuas. Um, my mother used to call it. Uh, uh, what did she call it? Uh, they, she had a name for it. Most most people have names for some things that when they want to talk about uh, certain stories. So that, that my mother didn't probably didn't go by uh, Mishmishu. Okay. Could you tell us a story about Nanabuju? Nanabush. There's too many stories about Nanbushu. There's, uh, if you want to make up stories, you can make up stories about Nanbushu because he was uh, this type of guy that could change. He could be this, he could be that, he could be anywhere, anything he wanted to be. Sometimes he was a bad guy. He was a real bad guy sometimes. Sometimes he was a good guy. Sometimes he was a teacher. He would teach, uh, he would tell a story to teach you how to behave or how to act better. You know, he, he was, he's used in so many ways, Nan Ushu. There's so many stories of him. So again, ask your grandfathers and your grandmothers to tell you some, some because there's so many stories, you know. And uh, somebody came up to me just the other day and they said, Peter, uh, you want to tell me the, how to say uh, rainbow? And I said, rainbow? I couldn't even, I couldn't even, uh, see they, they even have a bow to shoot with the uh, uh, Ojibwe's, they have a bow, eh? A bow and arrow. And I couldn't even, I, I couldn't even find the word for bow. <laughs> <laughs> that's how, so, so that's how come this language is, very important because he, there's not too many people in Sault Ste. Marie that I talk Ojibwe to. There's not too many because it's just like hunting. You're hunting. If you're hunting, you can't find who you're hunting for. And that's what happens with the Ojibwe languages. We can't, like right here as we're in the circle, you can say hello and she'll understand hello. Everybody will understand hello. You know, we, 
Anish P. Gadagushan used to call uh, somebody there right now, and they would say, what, what the hell did he say? <laughs> what did he say? No. So that, that's what I mean. Anish P. Gadagushan means, uh, when did you get here? You know? That's usually the first thing the Indians, Ojibwe people say when they meet each other someplace in a strange town or so, or, or somebody just got in town and say, Anish P. Gadagushan, when did you get in? That's, that's always the, the, that's one of the most used words when people meet each other that hey, you haven't seen the, in town for quite a while. Anish P. Gadagushnan, say that. Yeah, Anish P. Anish P. Gadagushnan. Uh, when did you get here? Yeah. And that's a, a lot of these words are taken for. It's taken for, uh, nishin means uh, it's taken for a lot of things too. Somebody say, says to you, how are you doing? You say, nishin, you say nishin. That means, I'm okay. And you say, uh, it's taken a whole bunch of words that means those things. So, when are we done anyway? 3.30. 330? Yeah. Oh, good, good. Because uh, I was getting worried. I'm going to have a drink of water. We have a lot of fun with that too when we say that. Means kwe is a, a woman in our language, kwe. And, and we get a lot of mixed up on that. We get a lot of mixed up on that because uh, some people say, uh, what are you talking about? What are you talking about, woman? Kwe, nga kwe ni kwe, you know? Means I'm gonna have a drink now. It means, just a minute, I'm gonna have a drink. That's what it means, nga kwe ni kwe. But somebody would say, what, what do you mean kwe, you know? But it means, that's what it means. So, one time I was talking, I think it was at Peter's uh, school there. I was talking to the you young people like you, and my, my voice went, <laughs> and I couldn't even talk. I, go, <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't even say, give me some water. Eh? <laughs> That's how, and I got scared. I'm an old man, eh? and I got scared. <laughs> <laughs> See? That's what happens too, and even when you're an old man, doesn't mean you know everything. You, know? <laughs> you, can, <clears throat> you can still get scared. But I, I, I am happy, for one thing, I am happy to come and talk to you young people here. This is one thing I like, because I know, in, you know, I, I talked to, I went to see, I was in the Friendship Center for a long time. And they used to tell me to go, to go to the police and talk to police because the police said, you know these Indian kids, these uh, Ojibwe kids, you give them, you try to tell them how to behave and they're not listening. You talk to them and they're kicking at the stones in there, kicking at the stones, they don't even look at you, they're going like this. That's what the police were complaining about. And they told me, Peter, go and talk to the, those policeman. And I did. And I said to those co cops, I said, did you know that when you talk to these young people, young Indians, young Indian girls, young, young people, they might not make like they're listening to you, I said, because they're busy going like this, or kicking at the sand while you're yapping your mouth. But they hear every word you're saying, I told them. And they'll, if you ask these young people 10 years from now down the road, or if you make a mistake, and then they'll, these young people will come right back to you and say, this is what you told us when we were young, when you came to talk to us. This is what you told us. So I told that policeman, I said, and, and a whole bunch of cops, not only one, I was uh, awareness, 
Native awareness when I was talking to the police. And that's what I told them. It's very important how you behave to young people because they'll come back on you someday and say, you told us that. Does that mean you're a liar? I said, no. I said, you better, when you talk to the young people, they are listening. I said, no matter what they're doing, if they're kicking at the sand and you're giving them hell for doing stuff, I said, you, they'll listen. They're listening. This is why today when I talk to young people, I know what I'm, who I'm talking to. I'm not talking to anybody that's, even if you're falling asleep, I know it. <laughs> he looks like he's falling asleep, but, <laughs> but you are listening. Bish ngakwem nikwe. Bish ngakwem nikwe. I'll have a drink of water. Sometimes it's backward, eh? But I say it front. Bish. Water, I'm going to have a drink. So, bish ngakwem nikwe. Say it. There's another Indian word uh, that's easy for you guys that I want to teach us right now. You know, the, there's a, I, he's probably in one of my paintings here, a crow, eh? You know, crow is very easy to say in Ojibwe, crow. It's, you talk about a baseball player that's, that's on deck there. He's, he's going to be next to the bat. Eh? So he's over here. He's on deck. And when you, see, when you say that this ball player, he's on deck, means you're actually saying crow. On deck, say that. Yeah, yeah that's a crow. My wife calls them, calls them uh, gossipers. You know, and you see them on the road <laughs> all the time. That's what she calls them, eh? but you call them on deck. And you want to make fun of them, you say on degosh. On degosh, yeah. You want to make fun of you, you say uh, silly crow or something, on degosh. Eh? That's what it is. Okay, who's next? Do you think about what you're going to paint? Oh yeah, quite a bit, uh, quite a bit. Sometimes I, I can't, I uh, have to wait a long time before something comes to me. It, it just doesn't, it just doesn't pop up. But that's why sometimes I'm slow. I'm slow in getting things ready. Like I'll bring uh, the paintings out, you know, I'll bring the paint out, I'll bring the brushes out. All along I'm thinking, what the hell can I, <laughs> sorry my language. Uh, what am I going to use here, you know? So the, the longer I'm thinking, preparing, I'm already thinking what I'm going to put on there. So this is why I say to you, why it's important for you kids, for you young people, that you can paint anything you want. It's just got to be, if you're not satisfied, do it over and over and over and over again. Just like riding a bike, eh? You fall down, get up again. You fall down, get up again. Same as the art. You can start by copying something. You can start by any of those things up there. Copy them, copy them. After all, you don't even have to copy them. You got your own, got your own style. You got your own way. Okay? What was your first painting and how did it come to you? My first painting. Oh, that's a, that's a long time ago. I used to, uh, any place uh, where I worked about uh, 30, I've been retired now for 20 years. And I've been, I worked in Wawa in a steel plant for 30 years. So I don't know, about seven years, a long time ago anyway. I uh, there used to be dusty windows there where I worked, eh? and there was on the other side was a guy. He was the he was in the control room, and all the when all the dust was working here because there was machines over here, 
on the steel. And those, even if we wash those windows, in half an hour or an hour, they get dusty again. And this guy in the inside there, in the control room, we'd go in and out of the control room steady. But I had the, when I was fooling around there with the, sometimes with the piece of wood or something, and where did it go? It ran away on me. No. What is it anyway? Rock. <laughs> <laughs> What's the name of it? Truth. Yeah. Yeah, I better tell the truth. <laughs> yeah, and uh, the dust was on the on the window, and I started drawing something, and he was on the other side, and I was trying to get him to uh, tell me what it is before I finished, eh? Because he was on the other side, inside, in the control room, and that's how probably I got more ideas out of that than painting, because I would arrive at. Uh, some of the old things that was told to me. Yeah. Can you tell us an Anishinaabe story? Anishinaabe story, I got that just to know, that I got that just to see, I've been going to Anishinaabe, I've been going to Anishinaabe, I've been going to Anishinaabe. You wouldn't understand what I'm saying if I told you, uh, if I told you. <laughs> Uh, any kind of story in Ojibwe because unless you're fluent. So that's why it is, it is, it is good to be fluent. I mean by fluent is uh, like that. And that's, uh, that's how you, that's how you should uh, be able to talk the, the language. But there is so many uh, stories you guys got a lot of you young people. You just got a lot of grandfathers and grandmothers. You are lucky. Some of you maybe not have any, but uh, most of them ask them because there are they are so happy if you went and said, Grandpa, you want to tell me a story about this, about that. You know, they, they like to talk to you. They might not think so, but they do. And that's, uh, that's what native stories are, Nishnabe stories. That's what they are. Thank you. What is your favorite painting you ever created? That's, uh, I guess the turtle was. Uh, I keep coming back to the turtle all the time. He's even over here. This was given to me a long time ago on the Sarnia Indian Reserve in uh, 1994, uh, I don't know, 94, in 94, that's quite a while ago. So the turtle is, uh, even though that's not my clan, that's not my clan. The, the turtle is somebody else's clan, and, uh, but I like, I like it, and it was given to me, that's why I like it. And that's probably why I wear it. I only wear that special occasions. You won't see me walking down the street with this. But it's important that I come and see you guys today. That's why I wore it. It's very important. For me. It's important for me to come here today. It's not something that, I, that I'm just wasting my uh, afternoon. It's important for me to come and see you. Yeah. Boating, yeah, I knew that was coming. I knew that was coming. The, again, that's for these. If your mother or grandfather or grandmother are from in this area, ask them. I'm from Mantulan. If uh, if you want to hear some stories about Nidor and Missing, they call that Mantulan Island. I have some stories, but for uh, for the stories in this area, ask your own parents if they're from here, if they're from here, because maybe some of your grandparents are from up north too, and there is a lot of, lot of stories up north. You had no, you had no. A lot of stories, yeah, okay.
Can you tell us about your family? Pardon? Can you tell us about your family? Can I tell us about my family? family? Oh yeah, I got lots of, like I said before, I'm a grandfather. I'm a grandfather and I got lots of grandchildren, great grandchildren. That one, my grandchildren having children, it makes me great grandchildren. And I, I have a whole bunch of grandchildren. And uh, most of my grandchildren too, they're, they're starting to paint. And I don't make them paint. I show them how to paint if they ask me some things, but I won't, I'll never push anybody to paint or anything. That's they're up to them. Like I told you before, if you want to do something, you go ahead. You can do it. You can paint if you want to. You can. There's no such thing as, uh, oh, no, I can't do that. Don't ever, don't ever lay back and say, I can't do that. You can do anything you want. Anything. Yeah. Um, when did you learn to speak English? On our reserve, 20 miles that way was a, a white town. Seven miles that way was another white town. 20 miles the other way was another white town. Little Kern, Manamoya, Gore Bay. They're all like that. I, I went and lived in Little Kern, 20 miles away. I went and lived in Gore Bay, 20 miles away, all white communities. And seven miles away, we used to do shopping there. So I was able to, we used to, I was able to play with white kids when I was your age. And that, you might think this is different today because uh, you uh, are all mixed in the city. But in, in those days, there was reserve and the white community, when I say white community, was a white community. Little Kern was 70 years ago, when I was young, when I was 10, seven, and I was, uh, it was a, a big thing there because uh, I was able to go to the show there at that time, it was 15 cents to go to the movie. And this time, right now, if you go to the movie here, you have probably pay about $15. But in those days, you know, see Roy Rogers, Hopalong Cassidy, uh, Johnny Mac Brown. You don't, probably don't even know these guys who we went and seen at movies. But that's what we did. So I was exposed. I was exposed to the German way of life. I was exposed to the white way of life. I was exposed to uh, a white man. He was, my sister was one of them, was married to a uh, Heinz 57 white man, we called him. He said, because he said, I'm a little bit Scottish. <laughs> I'm a little bit, <laughs> you know. He was part of all his nationalities, what he was. Eh? And that's, so I was exposed to a lot of that. And then, there's a part of my story that I wouldn't tell you. It's very, very important. Part of my story I wouldn't tell you because I was sent to a school that you guys are very lucky. You can come to the school here and you can leave in probably another five, ten minutes and go home. When I went to school at one place there, I couldn't go home. They called them, they called them residential schools. I was in them. I couldn't go home. I had to stay there at night. I had to wake up there at night crying because my home was, uh, maybe 50 miles if you went by water. But if you went around there, it'd be about 100 miles if you went by road. So you guys are really lucky. You can come home tonight. You can go home and be at home. Me, when I was your age, when I was 12, I had to stay in that school. I had to stay and stay and stay and stay. And uh, 
sometimes even my girl left right now she doesn't like that part of my story of her grandfathers because I was I was kept in a school residential school they called it that's your grandfathers and grandmothers about them too they'll, they'll tell you they'll tell you how lucky you guys are you got you are you are nice here you can you love the school and the school is, is good for you you know, this school is, you should always thank your uh, God that you're, you're, uh, that you're at the right school. And people are doing this for you, to teach us. They're teaching you how to be proud of your language, how to be proud of who you are. Whether if you're, uh, if you're uh, Ojibwe, if you're uh, Mi'kmaq, if you're, if you're anybody, if you're part Indian or Part this and this, to be proud of that. That's that's what the school is doing for you. You just do know that. And what I talked about here this afternoon, I know that you will remember. I know you will remember everything. Everything is, you say. And then you'll say maybe when you were young and maybe when you're 20 and 30. Say, so I heard an old man say one time. He'll say. Yeah, that's right. You'll laugh and say, I heard an old man say one time how to be thankful for what you got. And that'll be it. But I want to thank you, uh, young people. I want to thank you, young people, for being this quiet and being this listening. Maybe some of you didn't even listen, hear what I was saying, but, <laughs> but I, we, I think we had fun, eh? Yeah. yeah. I think we had fun. And I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank, uh, I want to thank uh, everybody that's part of this uh, for everything they've done. Thank you. Um, thank you for being here and letting us know. Oh, thank you, thank you. Miigwech. What does miigwech mean? Thank you. Yeah. yeah.